Good afternoon. In this video, we are going to look at weave schedules, and we're going to put a couple weave patterns onto our three different welds. So the first weld area we're going to work with is the butt weld. So when we zoom in to this area right here, and we pull up the actual program that we have written already. So if I go to my butt weld, and I'm going to duplicate it, so I copy it, and I'm going to call this butt weld 2. Copy, yes. Let's go into it. And now we have our positions already saved here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try two different things. We're going to do the original weave and then we're going to modify the weave so we can see what how it compares to the original. And we could do this in multiple different steps here. So I'm going to bring the robot down to position one. So I'm going to go down and just go step mode, shift forward. There you go, now we're in position one. I'm going to turn off step mode, turn off shift, and this is where we're going to weld start. So I'm going to actually get rid of some of these lines because we're going to do a couple different portions here. So I'm going to go ECDM, delete. Yes, we're going to delete that, and we're going to delete this line as well. Okay, so my weld end, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it to my world mode. There we go. And I'm going to move it over so that we are about, we'll say, 33 millimeters over. And then we're going to resave this. So I'm going to go over to my end here and my position over here. And we're going to go Shift Touch Up. So now that is now my position. And I'm going to add a few points between here and the safe position. So I'm going to go ECDM, insert, and let's insert, so let's say 8 for now. Okay. So now it welds end. So we're going to use our schedule here. And then we're going to start another weld. So we're going to go weld start, add move point. I'm going to move over just a hair bit. So maybe like 10 millimeters. And then I'm going to start my weld. So we're going to go add move point. And we're going to do a linear movement to that. And then we're going to start our weld again. Arc. Weld start. We're going to use schedule one and procedure number one right away. So procedure number one, schedule number one. And then we're going to go to the next point, which we'll say 20 over. Add move point. We're going to go linear, and we're going to do this as the weld speed. And then we're going to go weld end with procedure 1. And let's do that again. Let's just move it over our 10 millimeters. Add move point, and we're going to go linear, 100 millimeters per second to that position. We're going to start the weld. Once again, we're going to use procedure one, schedule one, and then insert a couple lines here. And then we're going to go to the final point, which is going to be 24. And then We'll add move point, linear. We're going to do this as a weld speed. Weld speed. And then we're going to weld end. Arc, weld end, procedure one, schedule one. Then we have our safe position. So I'm going to go down to my safe position and I'm going to go tool. Bring this up. 250. There we go. And then we are going to reposition this. So we're going to shift, touch up. So now it's already been recorded. And then it's going to go back to the home position. So now we have three different weld areas in which we're going to add a weave schedule to. So I'm going to just modify a few things in here. If you notice that our first 
procedure, we were in inches per minute. I'm going to just keep with the millimeters per second. So I'm going to go here and I go choice millimeters per second, and we're going to go 100 millimeters per second to that position, just so that we have like units all the way around. So we go up to the top, and we are going to run this as is. So we go run cycle, goes to the home position, comes down, welds. And this is just a normal weld. We have not done anything with the weld procedure yet, so moving over. So now we have our three different welds. Let's go to the weave schedule so we can see the different portions of it. So we're going to go to data and we're going to go under type and here's weld procedure. We're going to go down to weave procedure, which will bring up this sheet right here. We have 10 different procedures we can work with. So this is one of 10 we can move with. And here is our frequency. So that's how many times it goes up and down. So it's in Hertz. So if you look at it like a sine wave, how many, how close does that sine wave gets to each other? The amp is going to be, what is the highest peak of that? So here's a picture example of what the amplitude and also the hertz. So the hertz is how many times this happens per the travel speed. So the more hertz, the closer these Vs get to each other. The amplitude is the one side of that hertz. So if you have four in here, that means this will travel up four millimeters and then travel down to this four millimeters and keeps doing that over and over again. Now, if you change the hertz of this, this gets closer and closer and closer and closer till the point where it's overlapping each other. Then you also have the option to stay at that point for a given amount of time. So here's, it comes up, stays here for a few seconds, comes down, stays here for a few seconds or milliseconds, and it keeps doing that. So that's what the other information is about. So right here's the right dwell seconds and then the left dwell seconds. So right now they have it as a default of 0.1 seconds. So it comes up, stays there for 0.1 second, and then comes down on our item. So the first one we're going to leave as this. And then the second one, let's change it to say a frequency of two. And then we're going to enter on that. And then let's change this to a frequency of three. And let's see the difference between all of them. Okay, so we haven't changed the amplitude or the amount that we're going up and down or the dwells at this point. We're just changing the frequency of that weld. So let's go back into our program, but weld to enter. And here's how we add a weave pattern. So when we go down to where we actually have our weld start. So here's our weld start. So it's coming down to that position Then we're starting that weld. And what I like to do, and you'll notice that as the program comes down here, it kind of makes a little bit of a uh, nub. I'm going to hold off on the weld start for a few milliseconds so we do not get that little nub. So what we do is going to go back in here and I'm going to delete this line right here, which is 0.1. So I'm going to just leave it as 0.1. So I'm going to go in here, ECDM, and then I'm going to insert a few lines. And then I'm going to go add move point. We're going to do a linear 2.1. So I'm getting rid of this first area and we'll reteach this area up here. All right, so I cleaned this up a little bit. So instead of using the weld instructions here, where you use weld start and weld end, you would do a linear movement and then you use new instruction arc, just like how we've been using for the past couple times. So that puts it on two separate lines instead of one line. So that makes modification a little bit easier with the actual program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little dwell time here to allow this to get into position before the weld start actually happens. So I'm going to ECDM, I'm going to insert one line here and I'm going to do a wait command here. So I'm going to do wait in seconds, and it seems like 0.1 seems to be a good amount of wait before the actual weld starts, so you don't get that big pool that happens. Even though that doesn't happen in real life, it does show up in the actual program, which doesn't look too good. Okay, so we're going to come down, we're going to weld start, and then after our weld start, we're going to start our weave pattern. So I'm going to go in here, insert one line, 
we're going to start the weld and then we're going to start the weave as well. So we'll arrow over, here's weave. So the first thing we do is I'm going to do a weave sign. So there we have our weave sign and we're going to use the weave number one. So database number one. So if you remember from that, that we had set up just prior a couple minutes ago. So then we're going to go to our weld speed. We're going to end our weave. So we're going to go here, ECDM, insert, one line. So here's our weld end. We're going to end our weave. So we're going to over, weave, and we're going to go weave end. There we go. So it ends any weave number. So we have weave start, weave end. So we do the same thing down here. So we go from our point. We're going to do a little weight. And then we're going to start our weld. And we're going to add our weave start. And then we're going to go to our point, And then we're going to end our weave. So I'm going to add my points now. So we point 0.1 milliseconds. And then we're going to start our weld. And now we're going to do our weave. So start our weave. Weave sign. And we're going to use number 2 on here. And we're going to go down here. And now we're going to add our end weave. Now I'm going to go down and we're going to do the final part. I have my weld start here. I'm going to add my instruction. And then I'm going to go down to my weld start where I'm going to have my actual weave start. And then I'm going to add two more lines down below. All right, so we go down to here. We're going to wait here for a few milliseconds. And then we're going to go down to this point right here where we have our weld start. We're going to start our weave. And we're going to use number three, which we had set up. And then we're going to go down here. We're going to end that weave. There we go. So now we have those three weave patterns. The first one we didn't do anything with. The second one we modified. And the third one we modified. So let's actually see what's happening here. So I'm going to go shift up to the beginning of the program. And then turn off teach pendant. And let's run this. And see the difference between the weaves. Come down. So I turned off weld enable when I was just kind of testing here, but you can actually see the patterns it's taking here before you actually put in the weld. So these you can see as we get closer and closer, larger in hertz, we get more and more of those bumps. And it all has to do with the same speed that we're going. So I'm going to weld enable so it turns on the welder. So I'm going to toggle so it's true. And then I'm going to go back to my program. Shift up to the top, and then let's run it. So it actually sees the weld. So you can see the difference in the weld. So this one is a little bit further apart. This one you get closer, and this one you get even closer yet. So that's all the same hertz. Let's now change so that the hertz are the same, but how far it goes up and down. Go to my data, and I'm going to change the frequency. I'm going to leave the frequency actually at 3. So I'm going to change all these to 3. And then I'm going to go to the amperage. So the amplitude is going to be, we're going to go from, say, 1 millimeter, 2 millimeters, and then 3 millimeters. So let's see the difference between all those, and we're going to leave the dwelling at each one of those the same. So now that these are updated, again, the frequency stays the same. We're going to go up in the, the amplitude, and then we're going to go to our select, but weld, enter. And then now all these are saved because we use number one, two, and three. So let's uh, turn off the teach pendant and run this.
So there we go. So we have one millimeter, two millimeters, and then three millimeters as our amplitude. So you can see the difference between those. So let's go to our lap weld now. So I'm going to go to my select, I'm going to find my lap weld, and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to keyboard, and this could be lap weld number two. Yes. Let's go into it. And let's add a weave pattern to this now. So I'm going to go to where we have our start. And I'm going to go, here's weld start. So I'm going to add my weave after weld start. New instruction. And let's go weave. We're going to do another sine weave. And let's use number one. And then where it says weld end, weld end, we're going to turn off that weave. And we're going to go new instruction, over, weave, weave end, and then it comes up as normal. So you can see we didn't really modify this program too much. We just added a few lines and then added our weave sign and then weave end to it. So let's run this and see what happens. And there we have our weave for that program. So let's try the T-Weld next. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go to my select, and then we find my T-Weld. And there's my T-Weld, so let's actually duplicate this. So copy, and we call this T-Weld number two. Yes, we want to copy it, and enter it. And let's add our weave to this as well. Go in here, ECDM, insert one line, and new instruction. We're going to go to weave, weave sine. Let's do a sine wave of two, number two. So we have a larger sine wave. And then let's go to weave end. And we're going to end that weave. So now we added the weave to our T-joint. So let's actually see it go. And we're welding there. You can modify this so that it moves a little bit further away. Now the big thing is you want to make sure on a T-joint like this that when you're weaving it is not actually weaving and hitting the sides of your joint. So you have to make sure that you're further away from the T-joint or far enough away from T-joint so that if you change the cycle of this, that it will not hit the top and bottom of the metal pieces. So now that we've modified a few things, let's try a couple different types of welds. So I'm going to go to my butt weld here. Butt weld, and then I'm going to copy it, and we call this butt weld number two. Actually, we'll call it number three. I think we have a number two. There we go. But no, number three. Let's go into it, and let's add our points to it. ECDM insert one line. Make sure our teach pendant is on. There we go, and we we'll insert one here while I'm at it. So we're going to weld start, new instruction, and weave. Let's try a circle weave, and let's use number two, bank number two, and then let's go to the end, and we're going to end our weave. End our weave. So let's actually watch this go. I was doing that circle pattern. So now that we have our weld circle, let's try something else. So instead of weld circle, let's go in here and we can click the actual weave. 
So I can arrow over to my weave. I can go choice. And instead of weave circle, let's try weave figure eight. And let's use number two as well. So you can easily change this. And this is the only place you need to change because this, cha this ends any weave that you do. So now I'm going to run this and let's try a figure eight. There we go. Next, let's go in here. Let's arrow over so that we have our choice. And let's go weave L, schedule two, and let's run it again. So we can see the difference between them. And that is the L shape. Now the other weave is meant for higher frequencies. So now let's switch it to the final type of weave. So I turn teach pendant back on. I'm going to go back down to my weave. And we we'll arrow over so I have my choice. Let's go to weave sign two. And weave sign two is just like weave sign one, but it's generally reserved for anything that is five or more hertz. Okay, so I'm going to go to say number four schedule, and then let's go actually go to that schedule. And number four, let's change the hertz to say six hertz, and then let's go to, and then let's go in the amplitude of three. And then let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to go back to select, but well, number three. And we have sine wave. We have number schedule number four. So let's run this and see what happens. There we go. So we talked about the frequency. We talked about the amplitude. We talked about what different types of welds you can actually do and just kind of show you what they look like. You could do that on any weld. So it doesn't matter if you're doing a circular weld, a butt weld, a lap weld, or a T weld. Any of those welds, you can go with a sign pattern or a weave pattern.